part three for 2023. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, all you wonderful people listening in and uh, just geeking along with us. How are y'all doing? Just geeking along, yeah. <laughs> just geek along. Geek along. Geeking along. Geek along. Geeking along. As always, uh, welcome... It's about the geeks you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the General Geekery Podcast. This is, of course, the podcast where we love to geek out about all that we love to geek out about with no remorse. No regrets. And with all of the enthusiasm in the world. Indeed. Indubitably. Quite so. Yes, sir. At, <laughs> at, we are your hosts, as always. I'm your resident coffee ninja by day, actor, gamer, streamer by night, Donald Kaczynski. Joining me, as always, uh, with the uh, crocheting in the uh, right behind me. Uh, our... They call me the Lord of the Afghan. <laughs> She is our artiste extraordinaire and our resident video game mm. inept, Miss Hannah Kubiak. They were all of them deceived, for another Afghan was made. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you and your, you're back on the Cape Blanche Lord of the Rings thing. Yes. Wait, she's, she was never off it, what am I saying? I was never off it. She, she was never off it. What I should I? show you the, uh, the text, my family text thread at some point. Oh there is no. a There is a Lord of the Rings meme pretty much every day at some point. Kind of, kind of sounds like when we worked on Titus Andronicus, it was mainly Lord of the Rings quotes between you, me, Maya Danks, and uh, Thomas. Thomas, yeah. It was just mainly the four of us. Uh, with Robert uh, and... Robert Torres, yeah. Uh, with Robert Torres and uh, uh, Brittany Burns, I think, was yeah. joined in for a bit of that as well. Yeah. Anyway, um, we are back with uh, some more James Bond month, mm. 007 2023. The name's James. Month James Bond. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get... I, I swear one day we'll get there. Um, but uh, today, um, we are going to be watching and reacting to a Bond that we actually haven't had a chance to watch uh, for Bond Month yet. Um, mm -hmm. We are reacting to 1989's License to Kill. This is actually one of... Uh, has become one of my personal uh, cult favorite James Bond films. Yeah. This is one of the few films that stars Timothy Dalton in the title role. Now, Dalton was only um, James Bond for about two movies. About two movies or two movies? Two movies, exactly. Okay. Um, he was originally signed on for a three-movie deal, um, and th there was a big deal about him uh, doing so much research on the original um, Fleming novels and mm -hmm. reading them all, and he wanted to be as close to the original author's... Uh, description and adaptation of James Bond as possible. Mm. His first film was The Living Daylights. Um, and it sounds like a zombie film. <laughs> um, it, was, uh, it, was the first, it was the first one after Roger Moore uh, passed, on the, passed on the role. Um, and he just passed on the role. He didn't pass on. Oh, he, no, he didn't pass on. No, 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 no. He... <coughs> Gesundheit. <coughs> Gesundheit again. There's always two. Every time. A master and an apprentice. Every time. <laughs> Every time. And uh, so, Living Daylights was his uh, first one. Um, that one had a was a bit more down to earth compared to like the uh, uh, Moore era. But um, there well, was how could you not be more down to earth compared to the Moore era? I, I mean, mean, we watched Moonraker they went last to space. time. Exactly, we watched Moonraker <laughs> last time. So um, that was the first one. This one, um, upon initial release, was very. Um, critically panned by audiences because for, for many people this is one of the darkest James Bond movies mm. but in my opinion and several other um, uh, James Bond uh, content creators and YouTubers have said that this is in their opinion the best representation of Timothy Dalton's run as James Bond mm. and I Timothy have Ian Fleming's um, or Timothy Dalton Timothy Dalton's all the two it's the best yeah, uh, uh, like Living Daylights is fine, um, but it, in recent years it's gotten a lot more um, uh, better critical reception from mm -hmm. uh, fans. It's like one of those movies that was like heavily panned during the day, but um, continued over time. Mm -hmm. But people um, like it better now than they did in the past. Uh, they some tolerate it more now. Like I, Django, kind of. I like it. I like it. I like this. But um, this uh, proved to be a problem uh, for Ian Productions because there would not be another James Bond movie until for another six years after this film's release. Oh. And it wouldn't, uh, the series wouldn't come back in, until 1995 with the release of GoldenEye. With Pierce Brosnan. With Pierce Brosnan, which we watched last year. Yeah, we did. So, um, 
with all of that out of the way, um, we're going to watch this movie um, with our full unedited reactions. I've seen this movie uh, only once before. Um, I really liked it originally. I don't think, Hannah, you haven't seen this one, right? No. So we're going to go right ahead and uh, watch this. If you want to see the highlights of uh, some of our reactions, um, you can check us out on our Patreon at uh, patreon.com forward slash general geekery. The link is in the description below. Um, we're going to be doing this a lot more often with uh, movie talk and everything like that. We're going to be watching the movies, reacting to it, and um, uh, talking about the movie directly afterwards. So for those of you listening on uh, audio, on Spotify, Spreaker, and everything like that, we will see you guys after the movie. Transition! Hello, valued listeners and fellow geeks alike. This is your editor, Donald, here speaking from the future. Or at least the future of when me and Hannah originally recorded this episode. So, some of you that are uh, subscribed to our Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash general geekery may have noticed that we don't exactly have the reactions to our James Bond episodes up there at this time. Uh, we encountered a little bit of a snag recently with um, getting the reaction videos up there, and myself and Hannah are trying to figure out how to uh, get the, the reactions on there as best as we can. So um, we don't have any of the James Bond reactions out up on there, even though we said in, the, in each episode so far that we would. We're working on getting them up there right now. We're hoping to get the reactions in there by March at the earliest, but uh, please be patient with us. We apologize again in advance for this inconvenience. But uh, we thank you guys for uh, listening in and supporting us, and uh, we hope to have this up for you guys soon. And without further ado, let's take it back to Donald and Hannah with their reactions after watching The License to Kill. Pass Donald. Hannah, take it away. <laughs> License to Kill. Dario gets shredded. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it, it was a, it's a good death scene. It was great. So that was License to Kill. Um... Mm -hmm. My opinion, one of the most underrated uh, James Bond movies. It was pretty good. I really loved it. I mean, usually I have trouble following the the, the, the plot and the intrigue and these sort of things, but this one I, I I understood. I mean... Like, I could follow what was going on. Yeah. For the most part. Oh, I'm just going to move things around a little bit. Just get yeah. the... Oh, okay. Mic a little closer. Ba -da -ba -da. Uh, oh. Bond girl was pretty cool. Indeed. Another pilot, huh? Indeed. Mm. All right, so we just got done watching License to Kill. Um, so, yeah, again, like I said earlier on, this is one of my favorite James Bond films. Um, probably the most underrated one. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it. A, a lot of people, um, upon initial release, just didn't like the fact that Bond was just so emotionally driven. Like, they didn't like that? For, okay. For, that that for, for, made for, it in, more interesting to me. Okay, so for context, I think it was like a big reason for that is that the characterization of Bond throughout all of the previous films with like Roger Moore and uh, uh, Sean Connery, Bond was never really like one driven by like personal vendetta or mm -hmm. emotion, at least in people's eyes. Like he was just more like the cool, suave, always in control kind of character. But yeah. that's not actually true. There's been several hints in uh, previous films where Bond was like driven uh, by his uh, own personal emotions, and even in the Fleming novels, mm -hmm. especially. Yeah. So like he's a very um, driven by his emotions. Yeah, see, I find it is a more three it was a more three-dimensional character in um this in this movie in License to Kill. Yeah. As opposed to basically um uh just a like, Yeah, kind of a kind of a um an ass-kicking playboy basically. Or a or a wisecracking um uh Charming one-linerist in mm -hmm. the form of Roger Moore. Yeah. So, I, um, you said that uh, Timothy Dalton did a lot of like um, research in like Ian Fleming's books and everything. So, and I, I mm -hmm. mean, I can, I can, I can tell like the the uh, character was. Uh, it was a much more 
much more sympathetic character to to me anyway um when compared to um <clears throat> uh connery or when, more. when compared to uh connery and um more and um even pierce brosnan actually Honestly, I think the only the only other Bond that has honestly had like that kind of like interaction was mainly due to Daniel Craig. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then again, or Craig, him and, him and Vesper, yeah, yeah, Craig was like the only Bond to have like uh, more time to like develop as like his own like continuous storyline across his films, where mm-hmm. all the other films didn't really have as much like connectivity yeah. outside of the uh, the Blofeld movies yeah. from Connery's era. Yeah. And I guess it depends upon what kind of, like, what kind of, what kind of spy movies or what kind of spy um, themes you like. If you, if you watch it for the, like, the action and the intrigue and the, like, um, uh, the top, the top secret uh, dossiers and the gadgets and stuff, yeah. then there's definitely places for that but like like i've like i've said before like i i enjoy i i enjoy the james bond movies but a lot of the time i'm just kind of like oh my gosh come on like it's gonna like like all you do is shoot people and have sex with randos you know like <laughs> just, boiling down to it it does kind of yeah. have like that kind of like formula um yeah so that that formula the the like well, the charm of that is lost on me. Um, it, it's it's mainly just like the storylines and just the characters that kind of mm-hmm. keep you intrigued, depending on like which movie it is. I mean, of course, Goldfinger is iconic, and we absolutely love Moonraker and Spy Who Loved Me mm-hmm. just because Jaws. Well, yeah. <laughs> but um, in my opinion, like just based on like the ones that I've seen, this is probably like one of the first like. Bond films to be a bit more character driven than like mm-hmm. any that came before him. Yeah, yeah, because usually it's like, it's like we have a mission for you. And he's like, all right, I'll go off and do my mission for King and Country, but or whatever. Um, for Queen and Country. For Queen, and, Queen and Country, but but in this one it was different. It was like you're done, go go home. He's like, I resign and I'm going off on my own. Um, so there was kind of a that's kind of. We hadn't really seen, like, a Bond with this kind of, like, personal vendetta and personal mis- mm-hmm. mission since On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that, like, maybe next year if we decide to do a third uh, straight year of Bond. Yeah. Which I would absolutely be up for doing, because I think analyzing these films is always so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so, th- this was your first time seeing Timothy Dalton as Bond. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So, compared to Craig and Connery and what we've seen last year from Brosnan and... Uh, um, uh, Craig. Mm-hmm. What did you think? And more. And more, yeah. I said Craig twice, but yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I meant more in Connery. Yeah, I. Um, I think Timothy Dalton is my favorite Bond so far. I definitely like as far as just a fun movie to watch. The Richard Moore, the Richard Roger Moore, the Roger Moore era is um. The most entertaining, definitely. Like if you want to watch something kind of kind of wacky, um, then definitely Roger Moore is the place to go. Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, but as you know, I I am a um, I'm a sucker for a uh, character driven story, mm-hmm. um, and. This one was, yeah, this one was a, a, a whopper of a character-driven story, definitely. I knew you would like this one. Yeah. I, th- there's a reason I chose this one over Living Daylights, especially, because we get more of, like, what is um, that actor's version of Bond. For right. Connery, Goldfinger was the best representation for his version mm-hmm. of Bond. For more, I think Spy Who Loved Me is probably mm-hmm. the more accurate representation Brosnan, um, arguable that it could be Goldeneye, mm-hmm. like even though it's his first one, but I also get good trace of it with uh, The World Is Not Enough. Mm-hmm. And uh, for Daniel Craig, as much as I also love him in Casino Royale, we're going to get to him uh, next time. But yeah. uh, Part of the reason I chose Skyfall was because I, yes. have, I, have, I have seen it. And also I remember there was like, there was like, like backstory and stuff. Yes, I love, absolutely. I love backstory. Um, so, 
see. Yeah, what else? Let's Okay, let's 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 talk about the um let's talk about the really over the top dramatic deaths in this movie. Oh my goodness. Which one was your favorite? The, <laughs> the um the man drenched in gasoline set on fire. Sanchez. The uh, yeah, uh Dario going through the, uh, the 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 coke pulverizer and um, what was his name? Um, what was his name? Krusty. Kelter. <laughs> Kelter. No, 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 no. Heller was uh, impaled on the forklift. No, um, Heller. Yeah, Heller was the one impaled on the forklift. Um, then, it was. Um, uh, I think it was wait, Kelter. Crest. Crest. That's Crest, what it was. And then Crest was uh, was exploded in the uh, the depressurizing. That that was oof, that one got to me. So yeah, that's the thing. Like um, James Bond is no stranger. This franchise is no stranger to over the top, elaborate, like, and just sometimes goofy deaths. Mm-hmm. I mean, from what we've seen, Doctor No um uh gets uh reduced to nothingness in um uh, the radioactive uh, waste that he was going to be using. Mm-hmm. Goldfinger, um, comically sucked out of a, uh, uh depressurized, uh, plane cabin. Yeah. How did, um, oh my gosh, how did, um, in Goldeneye, how did Sean Bean die? Uh, dropped several stories well, from a off, height. Off the dish, Off yeah. the dish. Survived, and then had the exploding ruins of his, um, uh, headquarters fall on That's top of right. him. That's right, oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, he survived the fall. Yeah. Let's not forget, he survived the fall. Yeah. So, I'm pretty sure that there's something out there, like and then, some video oh, that's just Moonraker. Like, Moonraker's the, the death of Moonraker. <laughs> take take a giant leaf of mankind, please. Just hits hits them with like the poison dart, sends them off uh, uh, decompressurizing air to space. Out into yep, yeah, shot out of an airlock. Oh. Yep, shot out of an airlock. So great. Oh man. But um, <laughs> yeah, I was talking about it like we were watching um. Uh, the movie, like, this is probably, like, the closest that the Bond franchise has come to, like, crime films, such as, like, uh, um, uh... Scorsese? Uh, like, the Scorsese films, it did or, have uh, kind Godfather. Of a... Actually, the best repre- I think the best, um, example is probably, maybe Scarface. Hmm. Maybe Scarface. That's about maybe the most accurate that I can... Uh, think like this is probably the James Bond at its most Scarface. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen Scarface. No, never have. But I, I was going to kind of uh, try and you know say hello to my little friend. Oh, that okay? Yes, that's yeah, where I, it comes from. I don't. I didn't know that. I know the quote, but I was hoping I could fake my way through that one. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's Scarface, of okay. course. No, it's okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, basically, um, Scarface is like a um a crime movie about a uh, um person's rise to the top of a um uh, drug empire gotcha okay what um, about the departed is it kind of like that no, oh, n- no. M- much different much different um okay. but there yeah like uh, a large portion of that movie is like uh, some of like the like grizzly like deaths and stuff like that and this mm-hmm. bond this particular era of bond yeah. had some of like the more gritty uh deaths Oh my know. gosh, um, the guy, the policeman who was just eaten by the shark was pretty gnarly too. And, um, oh yeah, that uh, one, I forgot. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, Felix getting chewed up as well was Oh, was the, the, nasty. the maiming scene. Yeah. Oh no, that was wait. was nasty. I'll see you in hell. No, no, my friend, this is the first day of the rest of your life. That was just, yeah, at that point, like, when he like shows up at their house, uh, Finds um what was her name Darla Dar- uh uh Darla I believe Darla and uh, Darla and uh finds her uh finds her dead and I'm like Donald why are you showing me this movie Hey to be fair at least they didn't show like any of the events happening Yeah that's you true. know that you know that if it was a movie today like they would show like uh small cuts of like uh glimpses of like Yeah they they wouldn't they wouldn't show it but yeah. like it, the heavy implication was enough Yeah. Yeah. So well, yeah, no. Um, and basically, yeah. At that at that point, I was like, "All right, Dario's got to die." <laughs> and and it was actually kind of like the that was one of the reasons like a lot of people like panned this because like I mean, with at the time like the public was not used to like the kind of like uh, grittiness and like violence as like we've been accustomed accustomed mm-hmm. to like some of like our films and television shows like yeah. these days. 
So, this film did receive, like, some controversy for, like, all the violence. Huh. Um, and... That wouldn't happen today. Today, I'd be like, yeah, no, go right ahead. Like, mm. do do it. If you want to, if you want a good, if you want a good story that has that kind of stuff, like, don't shy away from it, but don't do it just for shock value. Mm-hmm. This yeah. di- this didn't do it for shock value. No. So, some people at the time so. said it was. I'm like, no, this is kind of par for the course. I mean, given what we've seen from uh, and know about James Bond, it's it, it's the life of uh, being Secret Service and uh, mm-hmm. just. Your line of work, working in um, uh, the line of work that both Lighter and uh, Bond uh, are in. Mm, yeah. So I've only seen I only saw this film once before uh, watching this. Um, I remember liking it originally. Um, so back in like 2015, when Spectre was originally um, introduced, I think I mentioned this a couple episodes. Oh, gotcha. Um, me and my friend Chris were rewatching some of the uh, James Bond movies in order to like get ourselves hyped up on, on it um uh and both of us were like wait timothy dalton was james bond <laughs> how how have we not known this so we were trying to see we were gonna watch one of his films but everybody was like no it's not that good it's not that good we sat down and we watched license to kill and we're like what the hell are people on about this was amazing <laughs> it was it was pretty good you know scarier than all the deaths um and the sharks and um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the creepy henchmen and everything. I think that the most disturbing thing in this entire movie was that fucking fish in James Bond's guest room. You remember? <laughs> when, he, when I woke up and the fish is just right there. Like yep. the, the weird ass fish with the face, like a human <laughs> face. Like, <"Well!" laughs> like, what kind of drugs do they give him? My gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's not the weirdest thing to come out of, like, a design department for, like, the James Bond films. I mean, it was still pretty, uh... I'm not arguing with you yeah, in that like, department. I'm not right, arguing with you like, on that. Right I'm here, right here, in, insert um, my my reaction to that fish. Like, <laughs> just again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. That, um, so... Yeah, so... Going on that, let's go on to the villain. So this is Sanchez is not the most colorful villain that we've ever had. Like, I think the only one that's probably duller than him was probably Stromberg from Spy Who Loved Me. Probably. But I would have to say he's probably one of the more realistic in mm-hmm. terms of like uh, a villain portrayal. Yeah, he wasn't like. He didn't give off the same sort of like, yes, evil mad scientist person, world domination, um, so much as some of the others. Yeah, this is probably like one of the Bond films that brought everything a little bit more back down to like, this is probably one of the more down to earth like Bond films, mm-hmm. just like planning of just like uh, uh, hoarding his uh, his drug his drug empire and uh, Work, working with the, like, arms dealership and just to, like, secure his uh, status on top of the mountain of this entire f- uh, family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I have to say, like, well done. Well done. I, and I completely forgot that uh, Benicio Del Toro was uh, in this as Dario. That, that surprised me. I'm like, I do not remember this man being in this movie. Yeah. I love this actor. I do not remember him being in this movie. And as soon as I, um... Yeah, what else is he in? Um, he was the uh, code breaker from the lo- from Last Jedi. That's who that is. Yes. Oh my gosh, it is. Oh gosh. Yeah, he's been in a bunch of other stuff. What as the well. heck? He's been in a bunch of other stuff as well, but um, that's the one that I know you'll probably recognize he was him the most. Good from. looking back in the day. I mean, he's good looking now. Still, I mean, yeah, he's kept yeah. really good care of himself. Yeah. But, but let's not like no, throw no. anything off. I don't know. Just something about nice, uh, nice, thick, dark eyebrows. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. <clears throat> also, when a guy has, like, a crazy grin and a, like, really wild, sort of sadistic look in his eye, that's also very attractive yeah. to me. Indeed. Just, <laughs> funny, funny thing about um, the guy who um, uh, portrayed the villain, uh, Sanchez, have you ever seen the movie The Goonies? Mm-mm. Really? 
No, that's another one of those ones that oh. um, a, a strange lapse in my cinematic uh, education. I had a re I had a relook at because uh, he looked familiar as well. He was one of the um, uh, brothers in the the Goonies, which I'm oh. like, that's so cool. I like that. <laughs> so yeah, really good, really good villains. Like I love how the, it's like it's not based on world domination. This is not a world domination plot. It, this is literally just a criminal <clears throat> empire. Yeah. Like like a, like a mafia crime family, and I. I love that. Yeah. Sometimes the simplest of uh, villains create some of like the best in uh, stakes mm -hmm. and uh, drama. And having it be like a personal vendetta mission after two people yeah. that he loved like was yeah harmed in this way. And I love how he did the whole thing as well, like infiltrating. Um, like he literally, I don't know how much of it was like just by by accident or planned or whatever but he ended up like staying at the guy's house and becoming like a like a sort of i guess informant for him or something about because he was he was the one who got um uh crest he yeah. like implicated crest in the whole uh Oh, he like was like murder he, scheme and got him exploded oh stuff. he was oh he was making he was making most of it up as he went mm -hmm. along yeah i thought i Seems like it, yeah. I mean, like, given, like, uh, his proclivity for being, like, an agent in Secret Service, like, mm -hmm. the amount of, like, months many agents will go in undercover mm -hmm. just yeah. to, like, uh, just, and know how to infiltrate. Yes. I mean, it's part of the job. It's it part of the assignment. Crazy. Yes. It's crazy, you know, sometimes, you know, what, a, what an agent has to do to achieve their objective. And I, and I do like Bullshit. that. Bullshit. <laughs> I do love that there is, like, repercussions on, like, uh, Bond going through like mm -hmm. all of this like the fact that I one thing I will say I did not really like um about the ending of this movie was Felix calling him on the phone and saying that M is offering his job back I'm like I don't buy that I don't buy that no. I, f I feel like there would be a bit more like severe repercussions and honestly if they had uh planned to do a third film mm -hmm. of like Bond being more rogue and trying to earn his way back yeah. Into MI6. I mean, I guess they did it just to, like, reestablish status quo. But yeah. I would have loved a bit more time with, like, more, um... Uh... Story progression. Mm -hmm. For Dalton. For Dalton. Kind of similar to how, like, Craig did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, Dalton never got that chance. Yeah. The Bond franchise was, um... Put on hiatus for what would be six years. And by the time that Goldeneye was, uh... In production, um... Brosnan was cast... Mm -hmm. as James Bond and we never got a, another Dalton movie which is a damn shame yeah a damn shame like this era this particular movie it didn't have like the flash and glamour and like kooky gadgets that like mm -hmm. there were kooky gadgets yeah, the toothpaste was kind of kooky the, to the toothpaste was kind of kooky <laughs> and, like um, uh, and, and, and the handprint um, uh, gun thing yeah, which uh, signature gun yeah yeah um, don't like they, they, it was Part of, like, the old era, I do understand, but, mm -hmm. like, most of, like, what made, like, the previous eras of Bond, like, what they were in, like, so iconic, like, the Connery era, the Moore era, were not as prevalent during, uh, Dalton's two films. Right. They were there, but they started to transition more to, like, more realism mm -hmm. in the James Bond films. It did start during Moore's time, like, following Moonraker, but it was still Roger Moore. Mm -hmm. And he's just the campy uncle kind of uh, James Bond. Mm -hmm. So having Dalton, who much more gritty to the bone and just so mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Like, Trabian. Trabian. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like, the thing um, when it goes to the... Um, uh, the, the the Hemingway house meets M and stuff and he's like oh you're going back home and it's like mm, you, it like kind of like it was like you could like you could see he was shook <laughs> by the whole thing that happened with his like his friend and yep his other friend and everything to kind of like go back a little bit like mm -hmm. um when during Goldfinger, like uh, mm -hmm. it's a similar kind of confrontation where uh, M's, uh, where 
in story. Like, uh, Bond is a bit shaken about what happened to uh, Jill Masterson and Goldfinger. That's right. And yeah. M said, you're... Like, you have to do this dispassionately and objectively. If you can't do that, then you're off. You're off. Mm-hmm. And um, we see that come more full circle in this movie where the consequences present themselves. Yeah. So, yeah. I honestly would have loved to see more about that. Mm-hmm. And... It's kind of unfortunate that this is probably, like, one of the only examples in the entire franchise where Bond kind of goes rogue like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, that's a really common trope in, like, action movies and stuff is when, um, to have somebody who is basically, um, going after their objective, the, like, the bad guys are after them. And then also for some reason, like the like like law enforcement or the government are after them as well, so they can't just go to the government for help. They have to do it like on their own. And there's something about that sort of like solo mission thing that's that's really cool. Like it's very like you have nowhere to turn to, basically. It's not a trick. Clowns to the left of me and uh, yeah. jaws to the right. You yes. Know? It, it, it. <laughs> good. That's a good one. It's not it's not a trope that's always usually like done. Yeah. But like when it's done right and it's done well, mm-hmm. it's very entertaining and for me License to Kill does that. Yeah. Going from that into um uh, the James Bond song. So last time oh. uh Shirley Bassey did Moonraker and we couldn't really Where are you? Besides that's that, all I remember. That's all I remember. Yeah. Now. <laughs> so the the person who sung uh, License to Kill, the opening for this particular movie, was um, the renowned uh, soul music singer Gladys Knight. Mm-hmm. I am a huge fan of this woman's work. Uh, I have Midnight Train to Georgia living rent-free in my head. Um, and uh, I I remember on my countdown last year of uh, counting down like my ranking for all the James Bond films, right. uh, the theme songs... I remember I remember ranking this film a bit lower and saying I wish this was higher if mm-hmm. were it not for the fact that other songs were not as good as they were. Right. Because I would have put Night in the top top mm-hmm. ten. I kind of want to go back and redo it because, oh, this song's so good. Yeah. I love this song so much. Mm-hmm. It's, got the, it's got that kind of, like, uh, smooth, jazzy regality that, like, you associate with a Bond film. Mm-hmm. But, um... It's not as, like, pop-sounding as, like, how some um, Bond themes have come to be known. And, I don't know, I just love soul music. Yeah. I just love it. I can't help it. I will say, if she did start um, uh, out of nowhere singing Midnight Train to Georgia, I would have lost it. I'd be like, Gladys, you can't do this. You can't do this. (laughs) You're a goldfinger, (laughs) moonraker. With a license to kill. (laughs) So, overall, um, in terms of the film, uh, for me, awesome cinematography, great action scenes. Yeah. Like, this, I know... Even when he was popping wheelies in a, uh, a, 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 a tanker truck. Okay, that was dumb. That was, the, <laughs> that was the only action scene that I could not buy. I could buy, um, uh, getting the... Catching the plane with the helicopter crane game style. I was okay with him jet skiing on the back of a plane taking off and him climbing up the plane in order to get onto it. I was fine with all of that. That was the only stupid thing. <laughs> that was that was pretty, uh, pretty, we, pretty ridiculous. Spinning the tanker onto its side in order to avoid a rocket and then wheeling, wheeling uh, a truck. To go through fire. Yeah, through a through a wall of flame. Through a wall of flames. The Batman style. <laughs> Those are the only that was the only part of that climax that I'm just like, nah. And also, um uh, of course the, the Shekhov's gun. Uh oh the the flamethrower lighter. I love, love it. Like they introduced that lighter, um uh the lighter lighter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the gift that um uh, they got for Bond for being their best the man. The lighter, lighter. See, it took you a minute, but you got it. Man. And uh, nice. how that was what was used to uh, 
uh, and the villain in the end, mm. just that personal vendetta touch, just yeah. chef's kiss. I love, mm -hmm. I, good. I love adding personal touches like that to uh, revenge stories like this. Yep. But yeah, Chekhov's gun. So, yeah, overall... Um, Chekhov's, Chekhov's lighter, lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably put this among, like, maybe my... Definitely in my top ten of favorite James Bond movies. Maybe even top five. I need to I need to double check that. I think I have to see more of them. I've seen to more. have because I've. Well, let me see. Actually, yeah, get a get a list of the movies. I want to see how many of them I've actually seen so All right. far. I'm not sure if I've seen ten of them yet. All right. Well, there's been 25 movies. Ah, oh, yeah. E no. Okay. From Ian Productions so far, so... Yep, name them. All right. Give me a quick second to look up the list. Sure, sure. Are you going to go, like, in order of when they were made? Yeah, it's the, it, uh... it's, it's the easiest. Gotcha, okay. Okay, we've seen Dr. No. Yes. From Russia with Love. Uh, I don't think I've seen that one. Goldfinger. Yes. Thunderball. No. You Only Live Twice. No. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. No. Diamonds are forever. No. Live and let die. No. The man with the golden gun. No. We've seen the next two films, which is Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker. Yep. For your eyes only. No. Octopussy. Such a. I feel like movie. I have seen that, or maybe I just feel like I have seen it and wiped it from my memory. I I don't think I've seen it. No. A view to a kill. No. Nope. You probably would have remembered that one because um. Uh. uh Oh no, how am I forgetting this actor's name? I always forget the actor's name. Christopher Walken is the villain. Oh, you're we'll, right, and I would remember that. <laughs> we'll, we'll put that on the docket for next year. Okay. Um, I know you haven't seen The Living De Daylights because that mm -hmm. one's Timothy Dalton. We just watched License, License to Kill. License to Kill. We, we've seen Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Tomorrow Never Dies. Nope. The World is Not Enough. Nope. Die Another Day. Nope. Casino Royale. Yep. Quantum of Solace. Nope. Skyfall. Yep. Spectre. No. No Time to Die. No. I have seen eight. Okay. The so ones that we've watched so far. All right. The ones that we're the ones that we've watched, or that we're going to watch. All um, right. For the for James Bond month. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I mean, Although, so, so, some you've seen beforehand. Some I had seen beforehand, yes. But like this one, yeah, like License to Kill, and um, I think before we started James Bond month. The ones that I had seen were Dr. No, Goldfinger, uh, GoldenEye, and Casino Royale. Right. I hadn't seen any Rod any uh, Roger Moore. Oh, I remember last year when we first saw Spy Who Loved Me. We were just losing it. Gosh. Absolutely losing oh, it. Oh, man. That was, probably, that was probably the funnest one to watch and talk about, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I love Moonraker. I love Moonraker too as a viewing experience too. I just think Spy Who Loved Me was a better film. Mm -hmm. And uh, would I put this above Spy Who Loved Me? I would put it on equal terms. I, I love living. I love um, uh, License to Kill for different reasons. Why? Yeah, the, yeah. For a different reason. Why? It's nice because each era has like its own distinct flavor, and you can appreciate mm -hmm. it in many different forms. Yeah, that's for sure. So. Unfortunately, this is the end. This was the end for Dalton's time as Bond. Like I said, only two movies. Absolutely criminal. He never got a third film. Yeah, I would. He should have. On, honestly, I would have also loved. Like since people today, like there's a big thing. Like since the uh, early two thousands, where um, audio dramas of like mm. works. Yeah. Um, I would love to have. I don't know if Dalton's ever done it, but I would love to have him just come back and just do like an audio. Uh, novelization of like oh, uh, yeah. his version of Bond doing uh, adventures. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, Big Finish Productions does that all the time with like the classic Doctors, for, Doctor, Doctor Who's Who, from like the yeah. 1980s and even Tom Baker. So, mm -hmm. what's to stop them? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's the end of uh, Dalton's era. Um, three movies down for this month. One to go. Next time, uh, we're skipping Brosnan. This time, um, but we're moving on to what many people consider possibly one of the best James Bond films of the modern era, and a lot of people's number one favorite James Bond film of all time, and it's actually the highest grossing James Bond film ever. Oh, wow. 
adjusted for inflation. It's the only Bond film to gross over a billion. This is the end. Hold your breath and count to ten. Yes, next time we will be watching the 50th anniversary film for James Bond, Skyfall. Skyfall. Fun. Uh. I'll, 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 I'll save my um, uh, thought, uh, thoughts and commentary yeah. about that song for in later. One of my, in one of my D&D groups, um, because my characters would get killed off so often because I would just, like, do random shit. You know? <laughs> and um, they would, it got to a point where um, somebody from the group would always play that song as my character was dying. That's like, hilarious. And, uh, and like, <laughs> so they're like, yes. That's and, uh, hysterical. Yeah, like, and uh, and uh, Kagami, go ahead and make your make your your death saving throw. I was like, oh no. Not like roll this. To, roll to five. This is the end. <laughs> Not like this. No. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this one. All right. Well. Yep. Uh, join us next time for the end of James Bond month, 2023, yeah. where we take a look at 2012's Skyfall, the third film in the Daniel Craig era, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with this one. I love Skyfall. Yeah. I love it so much. I'm... I don't remember very much about it, actually. I just know that the very end is um, its very reminiscent of Home Alone. I just want to see Javier Bardem. I just want to see Javier Bardem again. I forgot he's in that one. He's the villain. What a creepazoid that mm. one guy was. Oh. I'm so excited. What All the... right. Oh, man. I forgot about that. Well, that's for next time. Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait till then. Patience. Patience. But until then, dear Patience. viewers, thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening or watching if you're watching our reactions on the Patreon to this um, uh, episode of General Geekery all about License to Kill. If you guys want to see our uh, reactions to uh, some portions of the film in um, uh, all of its weird glory, you guys can check us out on our Patreon at um, uh, the link in the description, patreon.com forward slash General Geekery. And if you guys um, pledge to our Patreon, not only do you get access to uh, reaction vids like that, but you also uh, contribute a lot to... Uh, our content and what we are able to produce mm -hmm. we want to be able to do a lot more in the future and uh with you guys oh, patreon yeah and with you guys um uh, helping uh, produce uh helping uh support us on patreon we can make all of that uh more of a reality so we appreciate it thank you very much you gotta um, admit i've been rather lame with the patreon stuff well we'll get to it yeah no worries um but uh Thank you guys for listening in. If you guys want to follow us on all of our social media platforms, you can check us out on Twitter at uh, General Geekery and on Instagram at, uh, wait, no, Gen Geek Podcast on Twitter, General Geekery on uh, Instagram. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you guys want to check out me and Hannah at our respective socials, you guys can find it all in the description of this episode where you're listening, wherever it is, on Spreaker, Spotify, all that good stuff. And you can check check both of us out on Twitch. Me on uh, Coffee Ninja Ryu at my personal Twitch channel, where we also do our Nepticon streams, and on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, respectively, over on Loaded Dice Adventures as part of the uh, Avenaria Corsairs campaign on Wednesdays, and Hannah as part of the Avenaria Awakenings campaign on Mondays. Yes, because I am insane. <laughs> she just loves D and D. Yeah, I do. I do. So that's pretty much it from uh, us, guys. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. This has been our review of uh, License to Kill. Thanks for joining us. For Hannah, I'm Donald. And until next time, take care of yourselves. Um, don't, uh... I really don't have a lesson for this one. Uh, don't mess with sharks or drug dealers. I, I, I don't know. Don't, um... Uh, yeah. Don't get mixed up with a man named Dario. Nope. It's a me, Dario. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, always remember to keep your geek on. Always. Clink, clink to you, my friend. Dang it, my, my cup is gone. <laughs> <laughs> we. That was horrible. It's... That was the worst clink, clink ever. It was like a, it was like a kathonk splish splash <laughs> from my water cup. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>